by the end of this video, you're going to feel like you're within touching distance of that A star. With longer answers, you have more margin for error. Your examiner has more room for criticism. You will never see the same case study come twice. It has never happened in the past, so it's not going to happen with you. So there will always be surprises. You will see things that you haven't seen before, but just structured differently. I mean, these are all concepts that you've been studying for a while. Hi guys, my name is Yavar, and I'm the voice behind all those business video lessons on Alt Academy. And I'm here to tell you that by the end of this video, you're going to feel like you're within touching distance of that A star. So what I'm going to do basically is tell you how to prepare for the exam. Of course, the changes that have been made in the syllabus and the exams as well by CIE. I'm going to go over those, uh, starting with what's the best way to make sure that you go over the entire syllabus in the shortest time possible and how to attempt your past paper questions, making sure that you've covered most of the things that you would see in your exam. So <clears throat> we're going to start with the changes that CIE made last year in 2022 but uh, it's taken us a while to get used to them. I sometimes struggle. Uh, there have been quite a few. And basically what they've done is they've jumbled about some of the topics and brought some forward from the A2 parts to AS. For example, topics such as uh, Boston Matrix and Marketing, um, Capacity Utilizations in Operation, and Budgets and Finance are three big chapters that have been brought forward from the A2 syllabus to the AS syllabus. Having said that, they have taken some of the stuff out of AS and have moved it now to CA2. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of students practice some questions from the previous past papers, which may no longer be in the syllabus. So you want to avoid wasting that time. Uh, topics such as price elasticity of demand, um, the ratios, both the profitability and current ratios, and the topics of location and scale have now been moved to the A2 part of the syllabus. So <clears throat> don't worry about those for your AS exams. Now, what I recommend for making sure that you've gone over the syllabus properly is, is to answer at least one type of P1 question after you finish each chapter. So what that means is, let's say I finish Enterprise, which is the first chapter, of uh, take a past paper, uh, or in fact, look at the past paper book that you have and try to answer at least one, two mark, three mark, five mark, eight mark, and 12 mark question from each chapter. So <clears throat> you have 18 chapters, you have five questions, that's 90 questions. And remember, most of them are your two, three, and five marks, 60% of them, in fact. So you won't be writing too much, but what you will be doing is, is testing yourself with different topics. And, and of course, make this hard for yourself. Don't pick the easiest questions to answer. Obviously, that defeats the purpose. So you want to pick the difficult ones, uh, the most difficult two marker, five marker, eight marker, whichever you feel will challenge you the most that's the question you should pick and answer and if you're doing well with those answers then you should have the confidence to move on to the next chapter and then you simply rinse and repeat rinse and repeat until you're done with all the 18 chapters in the syllabus <clears throat> now once you're done with all the chapters and once you have the confidence that you know the content well and of course the answers that you write will give you that that's when you should be properly ready to answer your paper two questions right now in paper two how, how you test it is that in one paper you will get two identical case studies they will both have pretty much the same amount of information four questions some calculations some definitions and other things and if you can learn to answer one of those then the other one's exactly the same so you're you're literally preparing for both and when they combine both of those case studies together in one paper CIE makes sure that they test you across all five units in those two case studies. So what I mean by that is maybe in the first case study, you will see unit one, three and four more dominant. And in the other case study, you will see the other two, unit two and five, right? I'm emphasizing that because Sometimes students believe that if a topic or if a unit has already been tested in paper one, section B, maybe it won't be tested in paper two. But don't believe that, that is just a myth. You must prepare for the entire syllabus again when you go towards your paper two. <coughs> okay, now um, when you do approach your exams, and this is what CIE has done, they, they've, been, they've been better with their marking schemes since the syllabus change. And what they've done now is they've, they've broken down exactly what it requires for you to have a developed answer. So when you do in your own time, look at some of the marking schemes, you will see that they've given you pointers about what will qualify as limited analysis, for example, and what do you need to add to it to make it into developed analysis, for example. And once you have the developed analysis, evaluation, all the other elements that's when we know that you'll be ready or at least you'll be considered for the maximum marks now 
Another thing that I want to talk about is the way to answer the question, right? Your longer essay answers, which is section B of your paper one, which is at least two questions in both the case studies and paper two. So, so there's going to be a lot of long essays, when I say long, relatively longer, the eight to 12 markers. And the thing to remember for those specifically and all the other ones, in fact, the whole syllabus, the entire paper, paper one, paper two combined, everything boils down to four simple concepts. Those are knowledge, application, analysis, and evaluation. Ka'ai, should you want to remember it by that. So if you can remember that, if you can understand what they are, then you are really prepared for anything that the exam is going to throw at you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through a past paper and show you how each marks question should be attempted. What are the minimum requirements from each of the question and, and in a way that it sort of becomes a template for you. And all you got to do is simply decipher, just simply decode what the question is trying to ask you and then it simply becomes a breeze. So let's get that to it and uh, let's start with the paper one. I want to talk about the section A parts first and then we go to section B and then we'll hopefully have a full understanding of how to do well in paper one. All right, so what we see here is one of the latest November 2023 past papers and there have been a few changes changes in the way they structured the paper now and starting with section A you'll notice that earlier as in before 2022 question 3 used to be a 5 marker and then question 4 would then again be a combo of 2 and 3 but that's now been changed and now the 5 marker will be question number 4 and now 1 to 3 is your 2 to 3 mark combos. Now the thing to remember and once again I will remind you of our friendly concept of Ka'ai. K-A-A-E, which is a combination of knowledge, application, analysis, and evaluation. Now, what these are, are basically the expectations of your examiner. The examiner doesn't want you to count the number of points you need in every answer. The examiner is not looking for a balance necessarily in two advantages and two disadvantages. They're not going to sit there and count the number of words or the number of lines. You're not going to be judged on whether your answer is longer than one page or shorter than two page. What you'll be judged on are these four qualities. Does your answer have the knowledge? Does your answer have the application, analysis or evaluation? <clears throat> now, before I get into this, let me first discuss what these mean individually. And whenever you see the term knowledge, that means that you only need to focus on the concept that's being tested in that question. And how do you identify the concept? Even if it's a long question, for example, a 12 marker, where it may have two lines of within that question, you simply need to identify that phrase or that term that you can define in a one line business definition. If you can define it in a business definition, then that's the fundamental concept of knowledge that's being tested in that question. So when we get to a 12 marker, I'll show you exactly what that means. But whenever you identify that concept, for example, the first question, if I read, it says define the term labor turnover. I can clearly see that the only thing that I'm being tested on, the only thing that I can define as a business concept within this is labor turnover. And since this is a two mark question and it starts with the command word of define, then you only need to define this concept. You don't need to use it in a business concept. You don't need to show how it benefits the business or any drawbacks. As long as it starts with the word define, that means we need to write at least two things about the concept being tested here, which is labor turnover. So I could say something like labor turnover, for example, is the way to uh, measure how many workers leave an organization measure uh, I'm going to show workers with this stick man workers leaving right but that will only count as one in order to get to I need a second element to my answer and so I could use for example this is in a given time period or something as simple as that could be because of demotivation so a reason could make up the second point so any one of these two should do the job for you. And in fact, I'm going to give you a little tip here that will help you to answer all your two mark questions as, as quickly as you know you could probably scratch your head. So remember when you're answering these part A's, 1A, 2A, 3A, which are all two mark questions and another term that I've just come up with. This one's called E Fu Fee. Okay? Now the E there stands for explain. So what you got to do is make a combination of any of these two. 
If you can first talk about a basic explanation, and this is something you should always do, that will count as the first point. Now, your second point could be a combination of any of these four. Now, what are these? These are simply, the F there stands for factors. So what led to that concept? The U there stands for uses. Can you see how, or can you explain how the business could use it in their everyday business activities? If it has a formula, you can use that as the second point. If you can't come up with any of those three, you can talk about an example. <clears throat> and of course, talk about a famous example that should help you with your two markers. So two points, as you can see, that's what your 1A, 2A and 3A are going to be. Two points, it must include an explanation plus any one of these four. So what we did here was we used the brief explanation. We also use the factor. So it's the factor of, uh, or, or in fact, we, we explained the use that leads to demotivation and things like that. So any combination of these two should be good now for the full two marks. So your first question, which will be a defined question, only test the knowledge part of your answer writing skills. <clears throat> now, Luckily, the first three questions look exactly the same. So if you can learn how to answer the first one, the other two should be easy. Now look at 1B, and this one starts with the command word of explain, right? Now, often this mistake students make is that they include a definition in this part. That's the wrong way to approach this. What you need to do is simply use it in a business situation and show the knowledge through that answer. So for example, the question which says, explain one role of a workforce plan. Clearly, workforce plan is the knowledge part of it. And this three mark question is, is judged on your ability to show the knowledge and the application. So one mark is for knowledge. Can you explain what workforce plan is without defining it? and two marks or, or, or explaining it in a business situation. So for example, workforce plan is done to make sure the business has the right number of workers and the right skill set within the organization. That's simply the knowledge part. I've explained what it is without defining it. How it's used will form the application part, which means that the business does this to make sure they had the right workers to match the production levels or to make sure that all the activities are completed or the objectives are completed on time. So just how the work plan is then implemented in the business, that should be the application part of this. So you need to go in a little bit more detail. And the one change from 2022 is that they now only expect one point to be discussed in it. So you don't, and often this is a mistake students make. It used to be explained two points. So I understand why this mistake is easy to make, but you only focus on one point for a three mark question. Don't jump around a couple of points just to impress the examiner, right? Now you obviously follow the same process for the first three. Point A was a simple knowledge question. One B is a combination of knowledge and application. Application is, can you use it in a business situation or not? That is what application is. The third part is analysis. And analysis is simply knowledge plus application should equal to analysis. What that means is that, can you explain a concept? Can you use it in a business situation? And can you tell us, does it have any pros or cons for the business? So basically the advantages and disadvantages are, is what you have to discuss in analysis. And that's important because the question number four, which is a five mark question, is a combination of knowledge, application, and analysis. And how your marks are divided is that you get one for knowledge, two for application, and two for analysis. And a big change from previous years is that even the five marker now requires one point to be discussed. For example, this one which says, analyze one way that a business may be affected by a dynamic business environment. And what you should do is that try to find what are the parts of knowledge, application and analysis in this question. So when I read this, I can clearly see that the concept that's being tested is a dynamic business environment. So as long as I focus on that, I should get my marks for knowledge. They're asking about what effect it has on a business. So any business situation that I can come up with to explain this, that should be good enough for application. And since they've only asked for one way, talking about that is what analysis is. 
So literally you're combining the three of these. Knowledge plus application should equal to analysis, explaining how a business might be affected with changes. Let's say, for example, in the economic business environment, it may have a negative or a positive impact, whichever way you want to take the answer, but focus on only one point and make sure it's a combination of knowledge, application and analysis. Talk about the question that's being discussed. Make sure you use it in a business situation and explain the impact of that concept on the business, be it positive or negative. Now, a piece of advice is do not skip to section B and start attempting the questions from there before completing section A because they're both were equal. They're both 20 marks and it's easier to score 20 marks when it's made up of these short questions of two, three and five marks rather than trying to score the full 20 in your section B because it will have evaluation and of course with longer answers you have more margin for error your examiner has more room for criticism so it's always always advisable to go in the sequence that the exam is designed in section A first and then to section B and once again the key to in answering section B is is again in that concept of friend of Ka'ai which is knowledge, application, analysis, and evaluation. I'm just gonna bring it up here again. Ha -ha -e. right? Now an eight mark question, and now remember, of course, you only have to answer one of the two. Don't answer both of them, you won't have the time to. And even if, we, let's say we pick the first one, question number five. The first one will be an eight marker, the second one will be a 12 marker. So you're answering for 20 marks in section B. The eight mark question is basically just a longer five mark question. What I mean by that is for an eight marker, you need to show knowledge, application and analysis in your answers. And what CIA has done now is, is they, like I said, they've given us more details in new marking schemes. And what I understand from that is for one point to be considered complete. So when I write PT, that means any point that you're talking about for this to be complete, obviously they require knowledge, application, and analysis of that entire point. But what they have detailed now, then they, they've been very, very detailed about what they consider developed analysis. Or they say that if you can explain the knowledge part in one sentence, if you can explain the application part in two sentences, and if you can do the analysis part in three sentences. So basically what this says, you need to show one link in application. That means two, two things to say about it, two lines, two sentences, and two lines and two links in analysis, which means three layers of your analysis. So for example, if I'm looking at this question, analyze two advantages to a business of mass market. What I'll do first is I'll look for the point of knowledge. What concept is being tested here? And I think that's easy to spot. That is marketing, mass marketing here. So as long as I talk about that, I'll get my marks for knowledge. And, and this is the approach I advise to you. And, and it may seem like a lot of work right now, but if you practice for it enough in the exam, you can do this without writing. And what you do again is first pick the part about knowledge. Then in an eight marker, you will never be asked about a specific type of business. They'll just mention to a business. So you can come up with any business situation to explain the application part. And the analysis, like I said, was simply the advantages and disadvantages. And from last year onwards, now they only ask for two. So as long as we talk about two points, two advantages, and remember each point is a combination of one line for knowledge, two for application, three for analysis. As long as you do that, then each point should be worth four marks. If you repeat that twice, that should get you the eight marks that you're looking for. So if I'm writing this, I'll start with the definition. So your counter for the knowledge marks begin. Remember knowledge is the reflection of the entire answer. Your definition is not enough to get you the full marks for knowledge. It needs more. So if I talk, if I mention my definition of mass marketing, that should get my ball rolling. And then the first point, mass marketing allows you to target larger audiences. Now I've talked about knowledge without defining mass marketing, so that should do the trick. You can, uh, you can launch a USP with which you can target the larger audience, which then allows you to sell more units, also lowering your average cost of production, leading to more sales and higher profits. So take good care in making multiple layers to your analysis, at least three, two for application, one for knowledge. You can crack this 
and then repeat it twice for your eight markers. That's all you got to do. Right now, the additional thing, and of course, something that most of the students struggle with is the part about evaluation. And that's something that you're asked about in part B of section A. For example, this one says evaluate whether this primary sector business should use product differentiation to increase sales. Now, the question will be asking something very, very directly. So they're asking, should you use product differentiation? Yes or no? This is what you got to analyze, which means the advantages of doing this, disadvantages of doing this, keeping in mind the objective is to increase market share. And the evaluation, and this is, this is the tricky bit. Whenever it comes to evaluation of every point, just think about this. Will this work? Will this not work? If whatever your argument is, you think that product differentiation will work to increase market sales, then say something in support of it. For example, you can do that by creating good packaging and that's something that helps to create a USP. If you think it won't, then simply provide a solution. That it needs more than product differentiation, you also need promotion and right research and all of that. So your reflection, your judgment on what the question is asking, that's the only additional bit with evaluation. And your evaluation can be at any part of your answer. It doesn't have to be in the end. It can be at the end of every paragraph. It could be in the middle. But as long as you are thinking about this, whatever your argument is, will this work? Will it not work? If it will, say something in support. If it doesn't, provide a solution. And that should help you to ace your paper one exam. So remember your friend Ka'ai and remember each, each question has a different requirement. Some will have just knowledge, some will require all of it. If you can crack that, then you should do it. Now moving on to paper two, um, actually there haven't been that many changes to paper two. It still looks the same since before the syllabus change. Uh, you will have two similar looking case studies in the sense that they will have information in words there. You'll see a few paragraphs. They're all numbered for you to refer to different pieces of information. And something that I recommend for this paper is that you must read the case study at least once first before answering the questions. And the way to do that is look at the questions first and just briefly skim through it and see what are the major topics that are being tested. So for example, the big questions, part C and part D, which are your eight and 12 markers, I'd especially look at these and try to highlight the part about knowledge. And what are the concepts? What are the things that they're discussing in these questions? Because you won't have the time to go over the case study again and again. So when you're reading it the first time around, make sure you're making notes and highlighting the parts related to that question. So for example, this one's part C is asking for two elements of market and mix. I'd make a note of that, that anytime I see information on this in my case study, I'm gonna highlight it there as well. And for part D, they're asking me to evaluate whether PS should use the same payment methods and they're talking about some factories in the case study. So just so that we have a clearer understanding of the business, it's a good idea to first read the questions and then go over the case study at least once. So I'll start with the name of the business and then you're given some information here. And since this one, this paper is where you're tested on your calculations, you'll also get some information in the form of either a table or even a pie chart, maybe a graph, something through which you can take some numbers and answer part B of this case study. And then here are the questions, right? Now, the only change since 2022 is that A part one used to be a defined question and this used to be a two marker. This is now an identify question and it's only a one mark question. So you don't need to define the concept. One, two words or, or, or a phrase should do the job here. And in this one, they're only testing your knowledge about one non-financial motivator. So training, worker participation, whatever, just one word can do it. One phrase will do the job. So don't waste too much time on it and move on. Now there hasn't been changed in part A2. This is still an explain question. It's still a three mark question. And this is the same, it's answered the same way as a paper one three marker. So one point to discuss, make sure you have knowledge and application, both parts in this. That's what they expect. Now part B is the, of course, this is where the calculation comes in. And for those of you who are afraid of math, uh, what am I gonna do with the calculation questions? Do not worry. 
The calculations are only a total of six marks out of 100 in your entire AS. Now there's two ways to look at it. One is that it's only 6%, so maybe I can make it up for the lost marks here with my essay answers. But the other way to look at it is that calculations are your guaranteed mark. With enough practice, you can answer all most of the past paper questions. There's nothing new that they can throw at you. So if I were you, I would look at it in the class half full way and try to practice as many of these as possible so that I can guarantee these free six marks, which, which can be gotten in full. So B part one will be a calculation. You'll be asked to refer to the table. And something that most students struggle with is B part two. And part C and D are the same as section B of paper one. This is still an eight marker, which means that you need to show knowledge, application, analysis, you still make it a combination of two points. Each point is comprised of one line for knowledge, two for application, three for analysis. So if, if, if you sort of structure it in your mind, if you have six lines or six things to say about one point or one element here, for example, that should be good enough for four marks. That multiplied by two is eight and you're looking good. Now, C is the same as section B of P1. Part D is also the same where you are now asked to not only talk about just knowledge, application and analysis, but you also include evaluation in your answers. So remember your evaluation in this one has to be according to what the business situation is. And, and, and in fact, one tip, the biggest thing, the biggest tip that I can give you for paper two is that do not make any assumptions in your answers. Don't write things like, what if inflation happened? What if the government did this? Whatever information you give, you're given in the case study, it's all you have to work with. If you can't find a way to answer, write your answer with the information that's given in it, that means you're approaching it wrong. So don't make assumptions, don't come up with things just you want to make your answer sound right. Just work with the information that's given in the case study. The application is limited to the information in the case. So. That's something to remember. And as long as your evaluation is according to the business's situation, that the business has finance or doesn't, that's something that will be obvious from the case study. So make sure your evaluation takes that into account. Don't come up with things that are not present in the case study. So yeah, just one last thing, B part two. This question is often tricky for students to answer. But one thing that you got to remember is that you must make use of the calculation in B part one. So the way B part one, they asked you to calculate forecast profit. And if you notice in B part two of this paper, they asked you to explain one way PS could use cost information. Now we know cost information is part of your profit calculation. And this information is given in this data here, as you can see in the table. So they are asking you to be basically they're testing your ability to see what numbers are saying about the business, make some analysis of what the quantitative side of the business is. So make sure in B part two, you're using the calculation or at least some data from the table that you use for your calculation. Then part C and D, to answer those well, remember each point is a combo of this, you multiply that and yeah, sorry, before I forget, since you need two points for eight markers, my suggestion is that you should have at least three points to discuss in a 12 marker. So three points, a combination of knowledge, application, analysis, and evaluation. That's the trick for 12 marker in paper two. The second case study will have exactly the same format with business information over the top, four questions following it, and the same requirements. So that's paper one, paper two with I think all the tips and tricks that I want to share with you and uh, with I hope a lot of confidence that we'll be able to do well in our exams. So that was a rather colorful but detailed look at how to make sure you have the right preparation going into the exam. Right? Now one thing that I would say is that you can never be fully prepared for your exam. 
right? You will never see the same case study come twice. It has never happened in the past. So it's not going to happen with you. So there will always be surprises. You will see things that you haven't seen before, but just structured differently. I mean, these are all concepts that you've been studying for a while. They're just hidden in different layers in a new case study. So you just need to unravel it a little bit. And the way to do it is simply break it down into the knowledge application analysis evaluation parts. That's how the examiners are looking to mark you and why not present them the information in those four manners. Along with that, um, a good night's sleep is what you need before exam. A good breakfast is what you always need on a daily basis. And Alt Academy will always be there to support you in any of your educational endeavors. So good luck. We're always here to help you. See you around.